March 22nd, 2023. It looks like we're missing Matt from our Matt's out today. commission. So everybody else is here. Um, I have asked Commissioner Kerr to share with us a thought or legislative prayer. So we'll do a little bit of both. How's that sound? Love it. So January was Radon Awareness Month, and I became aware of Radon, not the, fir the first time in January, but um, uh, one of my neighbors tested his house, and they said, hey, we were above, so you should test yours. And I thought, I've tested all my houses, and then I neglected to do this one before uh, I moved in. So I uh, went to the DEQ's website, and they have $10 tests, and I went and tested it, and lo and behold, crap, I was above the recommended limit. So I would just say... Uh, if you haven't tested your house, get it tested. And the DEQ has really cheap tests, so. And then what do you do? So, uh, do, you want, do you want me to talk like what I did? So. Well, I mean, now that you know that. I want to hear your mitigation plan. Yes. Yeah. What do you do? <laughs> yeah, so, I'm just curious. Um, like, then so what? The, you just burn in the house. Yeah. Now? <laughs> no, it's, it's not like a spider. Okay. <laughs> it's not like a spider. <laughs> <laughs> a little more involved than that. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So anything above two Pico Curies and you're supposed to get um, uh, something done to your house. And so mine came in at 6.8 and anything below eight and they say retest just to make sure. So I'm currently doing the retests and um, I put them in different locations and I'm gonna send them in and in a couple weeks, I'll find out if the test, the first test was accurate. Mm -hmm. And then what you're supposed to do is get what is in essence a, a soil vacuum installed under your house and it vacuums and creates a negative pressure mm -hmm. underneath the slab so that it pulls up all the air and kicks it out the top. Mm. A permanent installation. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to be installing it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to cut into your basement floor? No. Or run anything up on onto the attic or through the roof. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we just I have there done that. <laughs> tested, um, a month ago, got the test back last week. We're under. Nice. I know. <laughs> so my thought is Centerville, given that Centerville, 73% of the homes roughly are generally above 2.7 uh, because of the uh, topography, you should get yours tested if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. so. I have to thank reminder. you. Nice. Or have oh. a system in. Yeah. So I yeah. will then offer a quick prayer. Great. Our Father in heaven, we're so grateful to come together. Uh, we are thankful for the land we live in and for the blessings we receive. We ask thy guidance as we go through this meeting, and we say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 All right. Um, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance, so if you guys want to stand with us. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Okay, so on the published agenda, item number one, it's the public hearing scheduled for the conceptual subdivision acceptance of the Stokes Stevenson Industrial Flex site. Um, this was scheduled this evening as an administrative decision. The applicant has temporarily withdrawn their subdivision application from tonight's agenda, so they're gonna bring it back at a later date, um, which will be posted and published when that is rescheduled. So, check. Okay. Um, the, the second item on the published agenda is scheduled for the public hearing to discuss a zone text amendment regarding the allowed uses of the Shorelands Commerce Park District. The petitioner is Craig Salmon, and this item is scheduled for a legislative decision. So, first we'll hear an explanation of this request from staff, and then we can ask questions. Afterwards, we'll hear from Craig Salmon, and the commission can ask him questions. And then following that, we will open the public hearing and hear from the public. And then um, any questions raised by the public, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Salmon has the opportunity to respond to those, and then we'll kind of, we'll see if we, we get that far. Great. <laughs> So, Corey, That's I think awesome. this is yours, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm the staff representative for this. Um, as indicated, it's a zone uh, text amendment in this case, not a map. So we're looking at just the regulations of a particular assigned district. And the request is to amend those, particularly in this case, the request is to look at the use um, list 
um, of the Shorelands Commerce Park. Shorelands Commerce Park is basically, if you go out to 1250 West, head all the way north, get over the bridge of Legacy, as you see the most of the open land there, um, it's, that's the Shorelands Commerce Park. And there's a small area um, that lies within the park that has existing roads, and you see that developed uh, Salmon's um, company is there with, along with other tenant spaces. And then you have J&L Nursery and Cook's Builders also in that place on existing roads. Um, I don't want to go through the whole history of it. I, I just wanted you to have the context of the Shorelands Commerce Park. Um, it's, it was set aside to eventually create jobs. Um, there was a time when there was a push even back prior to 2010 when this was adopted to convert that area to residential. And Davis County had encouraged the cities to create places where you could create jobs to try to cut down as best we can among all the Davis County cities um, some commuting on the freeways and allow people to work at other places. So it was mainly set aside to accommodate that and uh, the cities in the South Davis area came together, created a model ordinance because it was involved with the Legacy Highway. And that Legacy Highway has lots of stories and controversy about it, um, but it's evolved through that time and and is, is functioning as a freeway now. Um, the request that came in was a phone call for a potential tenant. I create the story to you. Um, it came in to us as uh, the set up a batting cage facility. Um, as we looked at that under the licensing, uh, we classified that at the time for uh, indoor recreation. Um, if you go to the SCP zones, it does not have a long list of uses in that zone. Uh, one of the contexts of it is, is that we have a table of uses, so it covers everything from our residential to our, to our industrial. Shorelines Commerce Park is not called out separately in that table. The model ordinance was created, had a few uses uh, listed into it, both permitted and conditional. Uh, we modified that because we anticipated there might be some residential development as a transition into Farmington, might be. Uh, we called that the mixed use node. That's been controversial even inside the city. We haven't amended it, but there's no zoning in place for it. So that's something to uh, still on the table in the future. And it, it, the access to that area that's envisioned for the mixed use node is missing also the infrastructure and roadway access, so that's never come to fruition, at least at this point. Um, so we did not put the uses on the table of uses, we just called them out separately, and we've been functioning under that kind of model ordinance uh, sector since 2010. Um, so the request was to come in and amend it because that, in, that uh, indoor recreation is not a called out as a specific use. Um, the phone call that was received by myself questioning um, that decision uh, evolved in a conversation that it really was not a batting cage facility. It was to be personal instruction for uh, pitching and hitting, so it was more of a coaching type situation, um, which is lending more towards the personal instruction side. And, you know, we can talk about the egg on the face. We have a couple of person personal instruction uh, uses there that was allowed. But setting that aside for further discussion, the person giving the call said, well, what I was really planning to do is I have a roofing business um, I'd like to open up, and then this would just be kind of a side thing in the shop uh, for uh, some personal instruction for my kid and some friends and some other things. So it wasn't supposed to be like an open gym membership to come in and do that kind of uh, facility. Which then led to the other discussion. Um, you have manufacturing uses, you have corporate office space that's allowed. And for an example, I can give you the distinction is you go to our industrial high zone, you have Hogan Construction that has a corporate office there, but they also have their storage yard of all their materials. But then they also have a facility down the road to the south that they're opening up for their fabrication facility. And so that comes under the guise of the manufacturing issue. And so oftentimes you have these uses that can cross over to each other. 
And so the discussion that was ensued on the conversation is, is well, if you're just using office use, because he said he's an independent uh, uh, representative of roofing products, and we said, well, if you're just having an office where you just do your paperwork and your invoicing and everything else, that can be counted as an office. And he says, well, I also they can come in and look at my samples. Well, okay, now we're really leaving the office use, and now we're heading over to where this is more of a, uh, maybe not a retail center, but it's a showroom. It's a contractor showroom, which is more akin to the cabinet shop on the Hogan site in another district because they're going to have the manufacturing use, but they're going to have the construction sales service of the, of the cabinet shop. And so I said, that's not really explicitly allowed you, um, to just do a showroom of you know, materials and wholesaling that way in the SCP zone. So that discussion ended. Um, they went back to the owner of the property, which is Mr. Salmon, given a call and said, well, what do we need to do? And I said, well, if you want a pathway forward, you at least have to amend the uses of the zone, uh, um, if that's the direction that this tenant wants to go. And so if they are moving towards this is more of a roofing business, it's a showroom with an accessory use for personal instruction on the off hours for the shop area, if that's the case. You can't just define it as an accessory use to the roofing business, because even in the ordinance, if accessory use is called out, you have to follow whether it's a permitted or conditional use in the use tables. And so either way, we're amending the table in either direction, whether it's a batting facility, whether it's a personal instruction on a limited basis, an accessory basis, and if it's the roofing, we're still, we're still stuck back to the many of the table uses. Now, one of the discussions was, is, well, we could, this is really just, for lack of better terms, I'm simplifying an extension of the industrial high zone, which in some sense, it has been thought of as an extension of the industrial high, because you look at the general plan and it said adopt a zone or create an overlay. Uh, we instead adopted the model ordinance, so it's a zone, but it's really towards that manufacturing and that industrial type of complex. But the general plan has twofold to it, if you see the policies. One, we want to create jobs. So that's, that's the issue of the Shorelands Commerce Park, is really to set aside job creation opportunities. And then the second factor was a design parameter. So we wanted something better than just putting up a cinder block building and uh, doing industrial uses, we wanted to be contextually sensitive. I kind of had an accent to that word, but I had to be context sensitive to, to uh, the legacy highway because that was the purpose of the model ordinance. Um, was we were on the west side of the legacy highway and to keep some of that design parameter. If you think of the SCP zone, it's not really, there's, there's two ways of looking at ordinances. Well, there's three, but the two when you're picking with design, you have a form-based format. And form-based is looking at the design and the bulk area construction and the visual appeal. So our South Davis, South Davis, South um, Main Street corridor is a form-based code. So if you go to that code, you actually have a very disciplined form-based code. We talk about where the setbacks are, how much building frontage has to be in it, where the parking has to belong, what kind of materials you use on your windows and your upper floors. And we're more worried about the design than we are worried about the uses per se, because the form is more important to us. The SCP is not really a form base, and it's not just, in, just a, a standard zone that gives you your setbacks and your parking counts. It also is a performance standard. So if you go through the design, we want you to meet your, your design performance has to meet these expectations. And so it's a, it's a more performance standard and, and has a lot more subjectivity. Performance standards do, and they can be controversial when you challenge some of those subjective standards. If, if you're not as objective in your findings, somebody could say, well, maybe you're taking that too far. So it's a performance standard zone. It's to be looking at the design of the area in essence, it is an industrial area, but it's back to the concept of job creation. We want to be able to keep the job creation facility there. 
I bring up a lot of arguments about it because the SCP zone has not really, it's been stagnant. We've just had that far southern area that's happening. And so I list all the stories into it. You know, it's someday we want to get to the SCP zone as long as we hang on to it that way. We still have lots of pressure being pushed as late for housing. And the applicant further to the north is pushing again on the city to do housing there. As you know, we're doing a market study for the whole West neighborhood to see what we can compete in. And so we don't yet know exactly how we can compete in the marketplace, but the concept still is we want a job center. So that's why I bring up the issue that these amendments are debatable from my perspective. Um, there is an idea that we're extending the industrial area um, with, a, with a higher expectation of design. But there's also this concept of that we don't want to introduce uses. So an example would be is outdoor recreation and splay out large circuit fields complex. Is that really what we want to do with the Shorelands Commerce Park? If we added outdoor recreation and had a sports complex, I would say that probably competes with the job creation issue because you're dedicating a lot of open land that could be used for business construction and job creation. So that's probably not a use that we'd want to have in that area. Not saying that that won't be the future um, because we just don't really know how we can compete. I anticipate we'll change a lot of parameters in the SCP at some point in time based on what we think the market analysis is going to come out to say and what we think in that market analysis we can compete with. Um, I could venture to say that it could possibly change to a commercial. Uh, the Hormans have looked at that, looked at looking at auto uh, mall center for the property and trying to compete there. Um, but well, again... Because they, ha they have lots of restrictions. Yeah. They have to geographically be located so many miles. You're right. It's the exit it's off the freeway for repairs and all of that. Yeah. So. You know, I just don't know where it's going to go, but I anticipate we're going to make further changes. I just don't know to, to what extent. And then does that further change acquiesce to the housing issues that we need? And, and again, I can't predict that. But that doesn't take away that you have an amendment here with a select policy. So that's why I say it's, it's, it's a debatable area with it. Um, for now, from a planning perspective, it's probably not, the construction sales and services is pretty easy because we can either allow somebody to do their corporate shop or we can allow them to have, or the corporate office, or we can allow, have their corporate office with some of their yard space. And I think we'll have that. I mean, contracting jobs and things of that nature do generate job creation and uh, they do come with storage yards and office space. The personal instruction issue, because I did not write it for the indoor recreation issue, I wrote it for the personal instruction. The personal instruction creates, as we know in the area, personal instruction can be controversial because you have the dance studio issues that come up and, uh, and, and that creates a problem. But you also have the off-peak hours uses it if you do a dance studio, which we can do. If the personal instruction is truly just accessory, it's probably not going to take up any more than the amount of parking for, for the roofing business per se. Um, but don't think that the personal instruction is limited to accessory. Personal instruction is personal instruction. What's nice for the egg on the face for the staff is uh, personal instruction is allowed in all our other zones, but the IM, and we don't use the IM zone. And I, don't, I didn't go back and investigate the tenant finish approvals, who did what. Um, I just know that we, personal instruction, we've allowed to there. So to allow additional personal instruction fixes a temporary problem, if you will, until we want to figure out what to do with the industrial park. Um, but I think that's a value judgment that you have to make. We can fix a problem that we have there, uh, or we can just say, no, we, I, we hold tight to, to the vision for now. So. Um, I provided to you, uh, I wanted to provide to you a third motion that lets you have an op-out. If you're thinking of an op-out, we can put something together for you if on it. Um, but I did get the applicant's version that this is an industrial center. And then I gave you just the, the 
construction sales services and, and personal construction and just say, okay, if you want to be, allow it, but be very cautious, you just be selective and push those two through. And then your third one is, is you know, you have a higher vision and you just as soon keep that higher vision for now till we know better. And we can craft something for that. So, so we don't have a strong recommendation because we think it is debatable. So that's all I have unless you have further questions. So what are the, what are the, um, I apologize, my, I can't get back on my computer. Um, what are the list of acceptable uses in the SCP? Um, they, they are listed in there, in fact. I know, and I can't remember them. It's going to center around the manufacturing, the warehousing. Uh, we even say protective services, which is more like your fire and your police. And Thank you. There you go. There it is. So Printing then, office. But if you look at the mixed use, the personal instruction is allowed in the mixed use. I'm not saying that's for or against it, but it is. So this is where I was headed, and it was the thought that struck me when I first read through this. Um, even if we were, were to be considering an indoor recreational use, how would that impact um, diminish from the purpose of the SCP any more than some of these higher impact uses would? I guess what I'm, what I'm questioning in my mind is, why wouldn't we just allow indoor recreational? What's the problem? I, I don't think there's a problem. I think this use list was limited off the model ordinance because we didn't plan on really getting much extensive out of it. We just wanted to set aside. And our problem is, is because we've worked so long with Horman to try to even get anywhere in the state for frontage road and get the wetlands cleared, nobody's really gone back in. And they, that's a failure maybe on the planning part or the city vision part. It was really just putting a placeholder. So I don't think indoor recreation necessarily is bad. In fact, I would venture to guess that some of the stuff we'd want to move out right. if we were really to go through and analyze it. So then the primary uh, purpose of having the SCP, um, was it a concession during the whole legacy kerfuffle to try to mitigate sprawl out into the wetlands? Or was it, is, it, is, it, is it truly just for job creation? Like, what's the purpose of this overlay? Uh, um, it's really the twofold. Uh, the first one is the county pressure to to not put everything in a city and housing. So that, and that was, if I were to give a percentage of it, I would say 30, 40% weight. And that's just being uh -huh. very generalized. Um, it was really uh, the byway committee created under the leadership of Woods Cross at the time. The byway was, uh, his, his vision of the byway when it was being constructed and all the controversy with the environmental issues and, and the Sierra Club lawsuit and all of that, he really wanted to create in his mind a, a, a scenic byway as the urban edge to the Great Salt Lake shorelands area. And so he really led the charge of getting the cities to pony up some money. I think we gave $16,000 at the time. Each city was somewhere in that neighborhood to hire a consultant and come up with a design parameter. So the idea was to be contextually sensitive to the legacy highway and the trail system. You'll see a hard hit on no pole signs and some sign regulation. And then you see a really hard hit in that zone to buffer the legacy parkway from too close of adjacent development in the trails. And then once you do build outside of that buffer, so I think there's at least a minimum 150 foot distance or something within that parameter that you have to orient and get your design parameters towards the legacy. And then it was to put the storage yards and everything out behind and away visually from the um, legacy parkway and its trails. So that was probably 60, maybe even 75% of why the Shorelands Commerce Park came into being was that, sh that legacy highway road. So I guess um, coming at it from the other side, the kinds of uses that we wouldn't really want in the SCP would be things like, uh, you know, houses, mm -hmm. homes, maybe, um, overnight facilities. Are we concerned about heavy traffics? Have, have you, have you no, I don't think because we have an 80-foot right-of-way going through uh, 
from Parish Lane to where we, it ends now. It's an 80-foot right-of-way. There's an 80-foot right-of-way down 650 North in Farmington. It's the connection between the two. And we do have a schematic road design built at a 66-foot right-of-way to handle tr truck traffic. And if you look further into the whole story of the shorelands, it's, it even extends itself in concept to create a Boulevard Street on 1250 West, kind of ignore the uses that are deep in and kind of old, and turn 1250 West into an entry street all the way up north into the business park. So it was design intensive that way. So could, under our current uses or even under the purposes, would it be uh, like distribution centers would mm -hmm. be okay in this? area? Um, I don't think it calls out distribution. But I'm asking just like, I'm, I'm 100,000 yes. 100, foot level, uh, that doesn't seem like the kind of concern that we would be all that concerned about in this zone. No, I would think that if you had something of a major facility um, that created jobs, yeah, yeah whether that's a, uh, whether that's an Amazon facility, which I know they're sitting stagnant, but at the time, whether that's an Amazon facility, whether that was a Facebook server center, it was just something to, and again, a server center doesn't necessarily create a lot of jobs, right. but it may contribute to some job growth. But we don't want to do that for water. <laughs> and are there, are there environmental concerns? We, we wouldn't want a gasoline storage facility out there. No, that's heavy industry, and I don't right. think we would want uh, raw products processing. Right. But we would want existing products processing, like steel fabrication, you know, whatever it is, if we had a big clothing manufacturing center, yeah. we, we would want those kind of businesses in the park. That helps me. Thank you. Yeah. So, Corey, my question, uh, um, well, maybe, yeah, so Mason, obviously, it seems like focusing on the higher, bigger picture, future par, uh, mm -hmm. plan mm -hmm. of the SCP. In my mind, uh, some of the existing stuff, and this goes back to, I feel a little bit burned on some of the changes we've made to table of permitted uses and other zones, especially on the west side. Um, so the exist, we have existing buildings out there, a handful of them, right? They were built given certain assumptions about what their uses were going to be. Right. Um, and then if we start changing the table of permitted uses, that changes the way those buildings are used, and maybe they're not built appropriately parking is a big one you know um so what uh, let me ask you this Corey, and you can punt this question if you want but uh what are the other personal instruction services that are out there already the dance studio and the kona karate those are the two that are there okay yeah i think i think for me the resolution has always been that flex space has been used uh too conveniently for 200 square feet of office 10,000 square feet of warehouse, which is one per stall, then I mark it to other uses. So I think the solution is still is back in the parking recommendations that we made, that your first 20,000 square feet gets you where we want to be. Yeah. Once you start heading above that, we're probably not going to be use, worried about the conversion uses of 20,000 square feet because we already have a high demand for parking for the first 20,000 square feet. But that feet. doesn't help us with existing buildings out there. No. They're, they're, that's already in place. Correct. Isn't there also like a personal workout? Uh, not to my knowledge, but I don't want to say no because who knows. <laughs> would personal, would, would like a workout oh. place be considered personal yeah. training? What does that Yeah, so, like? so that's, that's another interesting place that you see people in the use list start to create these divisions. So if you just said, I want to do a, a fitness gym. Indoor recreation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But if you go down to, uh, I don't, I don't know if it's still there, but you go down to Legacy uh, Crossing Project. That's the Megaplex Theater. Okay. They have uh, a facility where they are doing the personal instruction, health and nutrition, and the health and nutrition has a gym. And so. Part of it is to come in, and so they have a client-based health and nutrition, and these are the facilities you get to use for your, and so we, we they have them as studios, and so you're, 
So you see that personal instruction has a broad category. It always says typical uses. And so it says this, this, and this, and that, art studio, um, you know, fitness studio. But then if you turned around and said, okay, uh, I don't want to pick on, on a certain Gold's Gym, but if you did a Gold's Gym, okay, is that personal instruction? Is a fitness studio? Because it says fitness studio in the definition. Or is that a gymnasium of indoor recreation? And, uh, and so I've always kind of parsed it when I get challenged on these uses is back to, I think, conversations we've had earlier. Um, you're going to define it a certain parameter, and I'm going to put that in the business license under that per parameter. So that if you, and, and I have you write a confirmation of that parameter, and it goes into your file. So when you exceed that, then I have some bite that says, no, you were instructed appropriately, you signed the document. And so I do this a lot with home businesses. Home businesses have, they're so variety. And, and our home business list, when you think of the variety of home businesses out there versus our home business list, our home business list is pretty narrow. So if you're doing online sales, so example is I do eBay sales, it's just, cat you categorize it, you're just doing your office, and, and some of them I've said, I do third party drop ship. Okay, put that in, your, in the record, you're doing third party drop ship. And then that way I'll sign off your home business as a home business. So if they operate outside of that parameter, then I can hopefully use enforcement to, to anchor them in um, appropriately. But, but I'm not saying I'm successful. I have three businesses that continue to operate without business licenses. And I've had two of them before the city council before. And I've had one of them in court before. <laughs> and I still can't get compliance. So I'm not saying my solutions are perfect. It's just what we use because this is the way we do it in the business. If we get 80% of the people to comply, then we'll deal with the 20% somehow. My question was about the market study. Um, do we know when that's coming out or do we know any of the you know, potential findings and conclusions in that study? Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. Um, I was told recently, it's still another couple of months out, they're still interviewing some major landholders of the area. So uh, Zion's, it's not Zion's Bank, it's Zion's something, yeah, whatever. whatever their company name is that does these market studies, they got the bid. I hear it's still a couple of months out. Uh, they're looking at it from the city revenue standpoint, and they're also looking at it from the broad market standpoint, and they're also interviewing a lot of the major landholders out there um, to talk about what their view of, of what they're facing. And then they're going to come with their data conclusions of that and any potential thoughts and recommendations out of that study of where we can compete. So it is, it is a couple of months out still, but I would say if you want to, if that's something you're trying to, to understand first before you'd make a decision, yeah, this is something you would table or punt until you, that study comes back. Um, it's, but, it's, but to be honest with you, it's why I wrote a little long discourse on the Shorelands Commerce Park. You know, we're, we're, it's a $15 million road. I talked to the city engineer before I did this report to say, I want to put some safe guesstimate numbers in here, not something that's unrealistic. And he says, yeah, I think it's anywhere from 12, 13 million to 15 million to construct the road. Uh, we put in a grant for the environmental study. So that's the EIS study for the road. Um, that's gonna take most likely two years at quick to get through the process. Um, then we have to deal with 50 acres of wetlands, and that's on the southern end, so just north of what we're talking about right now with the existing uses, just north of that is where the predominant area of the wetlands, and those would need to be handled and mitigated, um, and so that's why it's included in the 15 million potentially uh, to that, and he said, you know, if we can get, a, well, we think we can get the grant, so they're feeling comfortable grant about the environmental, but now it comes down to funding. And it is on the Wasatch Front plan for inner city link, but that inner city link will end up on a low priority in the UDOT funding. And so 
my honest opinion is, is we'll get the grants for clearance roads and stuff like that, but we would have to create an economic development area, partner with the state, and it would have to be a developer risk construction of that road where they find a user and they build the road and then they take the risk that over a 15 or 20 year period, the tax revenue generation differential and whatever the taxing entities agree to participate in will pay them back over that duration. And so there are still people that I talk to that say, I don't think that's ever gonna develop, but. I think it's really tricky just because um, Centerville is more narrow than any other city that borders this legacy parkway. And, and the wetlands come way east and that's why Centerville is so narrow. And so there are other cities that have the ability to really explore this SEP zone where we really, we're very limited. And, right. and the number one thing you have to do there is mitigate those wetlands, which is very costly and very difficult to do. And maybe it doesn't ever pencil out, yeah. like you're saying. Yeah, and I don't, wanna, I don't wanna throw away the county's idea in a job center because you know basic planning is your solid residential areas, your good revenue from retail, and your job creation. That's the three-legged stool of the city. And so I don't want to throw it away if we can ever really develop that road, but I really think it's going to take some state money uh, to make it happen and will likely come through some federal programming that goes on with it. And I would hope someday, but I, I, I know that just saying... I mean, if we said, okay, we'll go residential, we're, we're facing the same problem, regardless of the residential. The only way somebody could convert that to residential is de-annex from the city into Farmington. And that's been requested in the past. And Farmington has said nothing past Steed Creek, which is that northern wetland. And so... Well, and, but Centerville is doing... If, if the goal is, is purely or a high... Um, preference is put into the job creation. I think Centerville is doing that as best it can in other places within the city. Right. You know, around the Megaplex area right. and, and around even where your offices are. Like, it, it's doing that. It, though that might not be under the SCP zone, but I think it's doing that in relatively the same right. area. So I, I guess that's why staff didn't come out strong for something or against something. I think you see the tone is, is we don't feel heavily threatened by the, any changes. Even if we did the industrial high, we know we're in a limited faction, fashion. We know that the extension of that is down the road and reconsidering. So the worst case is, is it just sits there with an IH uh, allowance of uses, which I think is debatable on some of the uses, but back to Commissioner Kerr's issues, there's probably uses we want to get out and probably uses we want to get back in, but that's still going to be long down the road. So um, for me, I'll, I'll just be right frank with honest with you. We've got two uses that don't allow. I can sit there and say you can't allow them. I mean, it's kind of an equitable estoppel argument. We did tenant finishes with lots of money to go in and try to kick them out now is difficult in the mistake. Um, and we just live with that mistake, or we can just make them compliant for now. But to do a zone restructure of, of you know, throw things in and keep things at, you know, in, um, that's only going to happen if applicants bring things to us. Uh, or we, we, we get the market analysis, know what we can shoot for, <laughs> and then we just go in and parse that list together. Okay more definitively than what the model ordinance did originally. So in other words, we can do an action tonight, we get the study, and if we want to amend what we make the decision tonight, we can do that. We could do a self-initiated change. Yeah. I think for me, you know, I know that for, I know for sure in the past this was true, it probably is still true, I would guess, that Davis County has the highest percentage of residents who leave the county to go to work of any county in the state. <clears throat> Um, I don't know, maybe COVID changed that, but I doubt it. Um, so job creation within the county, I think, is an important thing. Within the city is an important thing. And so, you know, I think we need to try and find ways that we can do that and be accommodating within reason, right? And whatever, this maybe isn't, this isn't a question, Corey. I'm out of, I'm out of order, but uh, <laughs> I think that, 
you know, we should definitely consider, in my opinion, option one for this case to, do, to kind of accommodate that. So, sorry, I spoke out of order. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll allow it. Thank you. That's great. I like speaking out of order. <laughs> Previous chair was questionable, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so do we have any more questions for Corey before we get to hear from the applicant? I'm assuming this is our applicant, Mr. Salmon. It's your turn. If, if you want to come up here to the podium and state your name, and, and this is your opportunity to explain to the Planning Commission regarding your request and give us your opinion, you know, why we... Okay. Well, first of all, thank you. And Corey and I have... We were the first one in this S... What do you call it? SCP zone? We're the first ones down there. And... And we kind of knew that what we're, I mean, not really know what we're dealing with, quite honestly, because this is all kind of new to all, to both Corey working through it and us working through it. So it's, it's really been a challenge. I mean, this is my third time here. Yeah. One was over, we can manufacture metal things like a trailer, but you can't sell them there. So that got amended that you can sell trailer. I don't know if you guys remember that. Okay, that was the first. The second one was, you know, the sign issue. The sign had to be lower. And then somebody else built a building and their signs were higher. And I go, what, what the heck's Corey? <laughs> What's going on here? Because, oh, well, you can't put yours up unless you change the zone. We let them accidentally, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I paid another $500 to amend the zone to match the industrial zone for sign. Is that right? Yep. Corey? So we matched that zone. Now we're back at it again. I had no idea, honestly, that this would be a problem because we have uh, Kona Karate, who is an individual instruction. We have the dance people that teach dance there. And quite honestly, they have been all great tenants. And, and if you've ever, and I've, I've attended some of the Kona Karate things and the dance things, and it's awesome what they're teaching these kids. I'm telling you, it's really kind of, imp it's impressive. Uh, and my grandson did it, and so I went with him one time. And anyway, they're they're really good people, and they're really doing a good thing. Now, the other thing that I, I find it kind of interesting is what was mentioned was this: we want job creation, job creation, job, which I agree. That's that's you know that's one of the reasons why we have an industrial park or an SCP zone. So I called all my tenants and I asked them how many employees they all. And I, in that little two acre piece of property, we have 184 employees that work there. That's incredible to me. I had no idea that there's that many people being employed, you know, by that little two acre piece of property that we have there. So, and that's not counting the new, the new building with this new tenant, and I didn't even count that one. But uh, so, I don't, I don't see what the problem is, I guess is my thing. What is the problem with these adding these exceptions? I, don't, I, don't, I, do, I do see the problem with gas or storage of gas or you know, an obtrusive thing. I don't even honestly see a problem with outdoor recreation personally, but I mean, that takes a lot of property, I guess, and so that, that will cut down the employment issue probably. I can see that. Um, I don't... So, so anyway, one thing I will say about the SCP zone that I've been pressed with, and I told Corey this the other day, is, is the restrictions on the building. You know, we can't do steel building. We, you know, the, it's got to be architectural design in the building to be pleasing. You know, there's, there's a higher standard. And if you've seen our building and, and cooks that build across, I mean, honestly, they're really, in my opinion, they're a nice looking building and, and they've added a lot of, we had to add a lot of features that I was probably fighting at the time, but I'm glad that they're there. And I'm glad that going forward, they'll be there. So I really like Corey. Corey and I had many hours of discussions. And I, we came down to saying, you know, really, maybe it's not such a big issue what we bled in here. You know, maybe the big issue is what it looks like and, and what it produces. So uh, if you have any questions for me, uh, you know, that's... Oh, one other thing, there was a, well, I did have an exercise person there at one time. They have moved into my other building where bare products are and zero res in that building. They're, they're, so they're, and that's in the industrial zone. 
as they do exercising there. So, <laughs> am I right? Yes, that's in the. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is a tenant in the new building that you're just under construction. Now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. And do you? Sometimes I see baseball people over there in that bare building. Is it them? Not no, the there there was some baseball people there, and there was a batting cage company there. Yeah. But he got way behind on his rent, and I had to have him get get out. I mean, he was it was terrible. Okay. You know, so if I you know leave, I got to have you go. I mean, I got to rent this to somebody. New tenant. Yeah, yeah. And I've actually warned this guy. You know, he says he wants to do. And I said, well, if you're thinking of making your business work, I don't really want you to do it based on that because this. You know, this guy failed. I mean, honestly, he just couldn't make it work with the baseball people. And uh, I think you'd have to, you know, it's, we have, it's such a seasonal thing, the indoor batting. That was the, the, the issue. The winter is fine, early spring, you know, and whatever. But as soon as the weather turns good, the people don't want to go in there and bat. And uh, so he's primarily using it for his business. He's a rep for TPO roofing on commercial buildings is what he, he's the rep that sells uh, to, to the contractors. And then he wanted, his daughter and is involved in softball and he wanted to do some couple batting cages there to be able to use it for their team. And so it's not a, it's not a driving factor for money revenue for him, you know, honestly, so. But, but he would like to do it. I mean, he had the room and stuff, but. Any other questions I'd be glad to ask him, answer. So the batting cage, it's actually up and running and They've got, you know, nets in there. Where? Or not quite yet right. built. Oh, no, we haven't built it at all yet. Okay. Yeah. Building we're waiting to, finished. honestly, we're waiting to see <laughs> if, if it's an approved use. He called me two nights ago, and, I was, and he says, can I order nets? And I go, no. No, <laughs> I'm, going, I'm not, if you want to be on your own and order them, that's fine, but I'm not going to yeah. say it's I'm guaranteeing we can get this thing through. But, so I says, you need to, you need to wait if you want a 100% guarantee that we can let you move in there, but unless you don't want to do nets, but anyway. So yeah, we have it in, he hasn't put it in. We're just to the point where the structure is up and now I'm gonna submit plans for the tenant finish of, you know, like I hope in this week I'd be able to start submitting plans so we get them reviewed for get a building permit for that. Let me ask you a question and maybe also to answer your question a little bit about what you know what the concern is is and just like I said a minute ago I'm I think that we should support job creation here and the the metered <clears throat> approach to this in my mind is in other areas where we've had industrial zones and we've expanded the table of uses it's it's been a problem actually because of things like traffic flow and internal traffic flow and parking Right, because a lot of times you get these flex use buildings that are built yeah. to have, you know, a lot of warehouse which doesn't have a lot of need a lot of parking in theory, right? But then you get certainly the dance studio, and maybe you can talk to me about uh, the experience you have with existing ones or what your plan is for this place. But certainly the change over times, right? When one class ends and another class starts, suddenly everybody's there to pick up and drop off, and it yeah. just gets to be a big fat mess. Or if and maybe they don't happen in this particular location, but if they do dance recitals or something like that, yeah. what does that do for parking? Is there sufficient for some of that type of stuff? So maybe talk about, about those concerns. Well, thank you. That, that's a really good point. And we've had this discussion many times, Corey and I, based on your existing parking structure. And, you know, like, for example, Sam and HVAC in my company, they, you, can't, you can't call all that warehouse. There's, there's absolutely no way. We have so much warehouse and then, or sorry, can't call it all office space. So we, we were able to tailor that to fit our need. Here's how much manufacturing we have. There's so much parking needed for that. Here's how much is an office. There's so much need for that. And that's worked out when we've been able to show the need that's worked out really well. And we have not had one problem with our parking over there. Now, based on so, some of the things that's driving is Kona Karate, Saturdays they have a tournament or, or whatever they call it, and and they'll, the whole place is empty except for them. You know, and the dance people, these dance people are teaching young, young, younger kids, so they'll come and drop their kids off and leave, and then they'll come and 
line up park to pick up the kids. And it's typically after, after hours of work too. So it's not been a problem, honestly. It's, it's, it's actually worked really good. She was one of, wanted to move into this building, the whole new building, the whole, take the whole thing, but it was just too big of a step for her to take that much more. And, you know, she has to include, increase her 30%, uh, you know, her, anyway, she just, it would just, I said, let's not force it. <laughs> so she's staying where she's at. And she rents two spaces. She has 8,000 feet and she does a really good job. Really great. But so to answer questions worked well. In the, in the industrial zone where this exercise people are, they, they cater to more adults. And so they're really busy in the morning. And, and it's worked out okay. We, we, you know, when, we, when we got them in there and they got a business license, we had to provide more parking in the back and in the front. And I mean, to get the parking and it's worked. And in fact, this works so well, they're not, even, they're not parking in the back. So, so we do have that still an additional for overflow and it's, and it's really worked out well. But they're very busy, really busy with their parking and people that come in there. Thank you. They fortunately had a big enough area to add parking. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, yeah. yeah. When, well, are there any other questions for Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. We're gonna open the public hearing, which I really was hoping someone would come speak tonight. <laughs> because golly, the public. We all came. <laughs> Right. Well, we're gonna right now. we're gonna close the public hearing. So that's that. All right. <laughs> um, all right. I think you meant you meant check. Check public <laughs> hearing. Check. It's now closed. Okay. Um, commission, do you, do you guys have any final questions that you wanna? Okay. So um, our great. Let's just discuss it. See what you guys are thinking. I already did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this I felt good about. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, like I, I think uh, within reason that it's good to expand some of this stuff to make that makes sense. And these these ones make sense. And I would support option one, not option two. I think option two comes with some unintended baggage that I'm not a fan of. So that would be my comment. And I'm done. Okay, my, my comment for the commission is just to think about this in mind. Um, when you're asking, what, when we're considering an amendment, and it's my opinion that an amendment is a betterment to what is currently allowed within the zone. So think about, is this a betterment to this zone? Does this amendment make things better? And yes, you can't always uh, foresee unintended consequences, but to me, that's the definition of amendment. So I thought we should just dwell on that. Um, anybody else have a? Well, I was just kind of asking about the market study because I think if anything comes out of that, that we say, oh, well, maybe we want to revisit something or you know, include, exclude various uses, I think at that time we have the right to do so. So that was good to know that. Yeah, I mean, to, to that point, though, part of the reason why I say option one, not option two, is, you know, once it's in there, it's in there, and you can't go back and force people to decide to change your mind later. So let's take this, in my opinion, let's take option one, look at that market study, and then revisit it again in a more holistic mm -hmm. uh, approach. I'm inclined to think that way also. Maybe what do you guys that. down here think? As you mentioned, it's a betterment, and, and moving forward with um, some of the suggested ideas, especially option one, I think makes most sense to me right now. Like the moving or coming back to it with the um, market study here in a little bit to see where that comes. Or the results of that will be interesting as well. I don't have anything further. Yeah, I'm persuaded that there could be uh, two too many uses that we might be granting without having fully considered them if we went to option two. Um, I'm in favor of option one. I, I'm actually in favor of a broader option one, but um, this, I'm comfortable with this. So like, for example, if 
an indoor batting uh, facility were to come in, or an axe throwing facility, or a, I don't know. Like a stretch lab. Football frisbee facility, I don't know. <laughs> it's, I, I see no problem with any of those coming in. So the fact that we're only doing construction sales and service and personal instruction seems rather narrow. But if that's what we need to do, we'll do it. That's fine. You're within your right to. I don't. I'm not going to lead out on that. It's fine. <laughs> okay. But I think to I think what? to what, to what the, they're saying is oh, maybe sure. when this market yeah. analysis yeah. comes back, we can further that, yeah. and we'll have the information and the studies to support it. Right. So I I like going that direction, mm -hmm. and, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm. Does anyone want to make a motion? Yeah, I will. I'll make. A, I hereby make a motion for the Planning Commission to recommend approval of the proposed zoning. Code text amendment to CZC 12.68.050H regarding allowed uses in the Shorelands Commerce Park District as follows um, under 12.47.090 permitted and conditional uses. Add the following uses of the SCP district permitted use list, construction sales and service, and personal instruction service. Want to make sure we're clear about that there. So, uh, with reason, findings or reasons for action A through in the staff report. I'll second. Great. Um, we have a motion and a second. Um, is there any further discussion? Probably not. Um, all right. Well, then let us vote. Let's start down here. Aye. 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 Great. <laughs> Look at that. It passed. Don't order those nets yet because the city council's got to hear it. <laughs> and you know what? I had. Then I'll be next week. <laughs> you know what, Mr. Salmon? I, I failed to ask one very important question. Yeah. Can I use the batting cages? <laughs> <laughs> or is it just for his children? No, I think he's going to. You got to make the team. <laughs> I've made the team. I'm on, I'm on the team. <laughs> I, don't know, I think it's actually softball. Softball. And this is why I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and his daughter's really big into it. But so they, he's going to let other teams come in and rent it. But I got to be on a team. This is You're this on the is, planning commission. This is what he said. There you go. <laughs> the team. I know. Be a team my, building my, exercise. But he, okay. All right. I just I would love to go. <laughs> There's not an indoor batting cage near. I mean, there. Yeah, there used in to be Farmington. You know, the <laughs> Congo, the Congo basketball uh, new courts that they put in in Farmington, just right they across the street the from the Avalanche indoor facility. Part of their building is an indoor batting cage. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yep. I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah. Just into Farmington, right by the Farmington High School. I mean, when I was younger, it was the 49th Street Galleria. <laughs> I love that place. <laughs> and we would go there, and I, I broke. You know, I got lost. Anyway. Excellent. Few years ago. I, I would like to come. <laughs> so, okay. Does Cherry Hill still have it outside? Yeah, but they're outside. And I don't know if they're still, they expanded their parking lot. I'm not. They took out the river in spring around here. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. Thank you, Mr. Salmon. Is that it? So that's it. That's it for you. You're welcome to stay. The rest of the meeting is so invigorating. We're just going to talk about not yeah. exciting stuff. But yeah, you and Corey, if you got any questions, Corey, you know, the report comes out, you know the drill. It sounds like you've been here four times, so <laughs> you know it better than me. I wonder what we're, what we're going to find the next hurdle. Oh, that's what I'm coming. Oh, <laughs> there'll be some more. Corey will spring something on you. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you. It's an untested zone. It's going <laughs> to. Mm, sounds like it. <sighs> All right. Now is the exciting time for your community development director's report. Yay! Corey! <laughs> <laughs> so exciting. So we, we have a meeting. Whitney, do you remember how many items are ready? None. None ready. We have several applications, um, but they've, uh, Whitney's been great at being very disciplined on their completeness review. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Good. So, Gold star. Do we oh, have Canyon Coy? Point might be ready. Canyon Point, I think, is ready, oh, actually. Canyon. Now that That's I'm... okay. You so. vetted them. <laughs> um, just to give you an update, Council is in the middle of their budget. Lisa had the joy of being there last night until late. Um, <laughs> Along um, with Corey. Yeah, but I'll be there again tomorrow. Do you have snacks? 
I mean, at oh, least yeah. Bryce. Okay. Bryce overdoes it. Bryce mm. does a good job. He does. does. He? He... Bryce, there's another city employee. Give him a culture coin. Kudos to Bryce. <laughs> and he's doing really great with like the social media stuff, yeah. which is kind of a sidebar to his actual job. Yep. Sorry. Side note. Good job, Bryce. No, it is. Um, <laughs> I did have a separate conversation with the city manager and the mayor with the appointment. I did get your chair's email. Yeah. Uh, finding out, so hopefully the mayor. He does not like to respond, Mayor. I am open to your response at any time. Yep. Just hit reply and let me know what's going but, on. Uh, <laughs> Throw it out there. Well, I, Wilkins I, 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 I did this with, I think, respect to you, but I'll, I'll be confessional. I said, Brant, if I need to, I can turn Heidi loose on the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> and Brant said, uh oh, turn her loose. And he goes. Maybe I better talk to the mayor first. <laughs> well, I've been very disciplined. You I have. I've disciplined myself. I mean, yeah. I, I, I haven't copied Corey on all of my correspondence with the mayor, but I tapped him into some. Yep. I, I just, I would like a complete. No, I appreciate it. And I know we have one that's leaving soon, and I don't want to be down again. Like, yep. I'd like to just, because I'd like to do a little bit of training. Yep. Lisa ha has some training that she's really good at. You have some training. We have some new members. And so I'd like to do a little bit of training, you know, do you know what a legislative decision is versus an administrative one? I do now. He, he does now. <laughs> so I just say, like, it'd be great to do that. Yes, so no, that's I why I'm pushing the mayor to... No, and I'm, I'm grateful. Fill the commission. That's the reason I can comfortably talk to you in front of you is because I'm grateful for it. <laughs> I'm very grateful for it because it's hard to be the lone voice going, please, yeah. please. And then... He may have just blocked my email because yeah. he's no longer responding. Um, he does take it. He does take the appointment serious. He likes to get quality. I think the issue is his analysis paralysis. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe he's heard our plea tonight. Maybe he's heard his plea tonight. He's probably watching from home. Right? I hope Pro so. Pro probably. It'll be awesome. Or we'll get, we'll get a email tomorrow. Yeah. It's, probably. It's fine. We, we probably. I do appreciate his thoughtful his thoughtful method. Um, just keep it going. Just keep it going. Keep it going. Yeah. Um, and then tomorrow night's my budget presentation to the council. I anticipate we'll have a line item discussion, particularly about general planning, the west side, what we're budgeting this year. And I will bring up again the memo that I sent to both the city manager and administrator on your goal session. So um, hopefully I can get a commitment on a, a horizon for a work session with the commission on goals. But I do think the budget is kind of driving it. Yeah, we're going to lose the budget every time. Yeah. Well, they're preserving, in the current budget, are preserving a, a total of 80000 still. Hmm. Okay. So hopefully we get um, somewhere with that. A new general plan. General plan. General plan. Our general plan is a little bit outdated. Some things have changed. Directions have Just changed. Just a little. I'd really love to have a new general the city's plan. city's growling. Oh, my God, I am. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my report, unless you have questions. Um, I have a question. Did did I just miss the day where you told everyone we passed the moderate income housing test? Or, or uh, is, did you? Did no, I, did, I, I sent out no email. Okay, so I just want everyone to know. Can I just say? Yep. Okay, I want everyone to know we passed. Oh, good. We, we the moderate income housing goals that we set. That got denied. Hard that got forward. denied. They've now been accepted, and they even said, "Great job! You gave us five. We only asked for." Three. Three, and so you're two over, so you get a gold star. So thank you. So I just, that was work we had to do that was a little tricky and harder, and so thank you. <laughs> 66 cities failed, so. Yeah. Out of how many? Oh, how many cities we have? Whatever. A couple hundred almost. It depends on who you include. Do you count, you count one ship? <laughs> Specified cities. Yeah. So that was just I wanted to report back to everybody because I thought that was. Yeah, I didn't know that. I thought it was yeah. good. That was coming. To Sorry, I don't. I did send an email out where they sent. I don't know where it came from. I can look back, but yeah, we did pass on that. But there's been some changes to the MIH uh, program again, particularly about some reporting and the way uh, Department of Workforce Services functions. They put in an appellate process that was interesting that passed. Um, just for kicks and giggles, the subdivision ordinance has been really wrangled up. So <laughs> some of it's good, some of it's questionable, and some of it, the hint, the little, the little Easter egg to you, they're removing the city council from approving subdivisions. Wow. 
Yeah, I've already started redrafting those chapters, and it's making it really easy because we're just cutting this stuff yeah. out. Well, the, I can't have a concept plan anymore unless the applicant wants one. Yeah, oh. so, so the, goal, the whole goal, right, final. is to streamline the process so that we're not dragging our feet and taking so long and under the guise of providing low to moderate income housing. Yeah, right. But, but so the, the, the legislature says we cannot include the city council or would they just take out the requirement? Cannot. Cannot. Oh, boy. It'll be you're planning commissioner staff Preliminary, now. likely. And you yep. get only one public hearing. Only one. Don't, it's going to be fine. No. Now, now the positive. And we only have going to be off the committee anyway. To look 15, this calendar, 15 business days to look at it, so. Yes. 15? 15. On the preliminary yeah. and 20 calendar days and on the final. 20 on the final. So, For the first review. And then they, you know, we give them. And the if we don't act, then it's an, uh, an assumed approval. It's approval. Well, yeah. No well, acceptance. waived. Yeah. And then they'd still have to go to final, but yeah. So, so we so. couldn't. We couldn't table it and have them come back. Well, it's for staff review to get us the com them the comments back. So first, we say we're not even going to accept it if it's not complete. So we could still table, but no staff. The, the 15, yeah. 20 days is for staff, oh, and then right. they have time because before it even comes to you, we go back and yeah, forth. I believe Corey yeah, goes I back and forth. And, yeah. But. Okay. Thanks. Except for lot lines and PUD requests. There's a lot of back and forth. No, but those are easier too now. I'm already, I, I, that's. Look how excited this is. It's clear. So there's going to be a no little more bit of a change, amended flat. We're going to need a little, you know. Yeah. We're going to have to all get ourselves a little retrained, retrained Again, on that. That's why we need a full, yeah. a full commission here so we can all get retrained again. <laughs> well, well, the nice thing is we, well we have to bring this whole that was a good circle back. revised subdivision to yes. you for review. So the entire planning commission will get to go through it yeah. um, and all of those changes and, you know, weigh in. It's going to be awesome. Maybe it is a good time to get off the commission. <laughs> <laughs> I'm You've probably done that subdivision yeah. review three times. Yeah, the seven-year itch, is that what this is? Yeah, seven-year itch, that's right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Shall we uh, review the minutes? Let's do oh. Okay. I don't have them. Okay, she's got them up on the screen. Does anyone have any uh, changes or thoughts on page three. one? Mm -hmm. I don't know. No? Okay. Let's look at this one. Page two. Page three, four, five, six. <laughs> All right. Now we're good. <laughs> Everyone thinks they're good. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? All motion to approve the minutes as we see them before us. Second. No. Yeah. Go ahead. You got it. Oh. <laughs> we got a second. The second. All right. Um, can we vote this together? We yeah. Let's vote together. Everyone who wants to vote in favor, say aye. 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 Great. Um, does anyone have any last words before we adjourn? Burning words. I know. I've had a lot this evening, so I just want to make sure everybody gets their time. Okay. Um, does anyone want to? I move we adjourn. Super. I second. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Two seconds stolen tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All in favor, say aye. Aye. aye.